Pastor, I appreciate you, you being with us. Um, before we talk about the specifics of, of what's happened to you about being defrocked, I do want to ask you about your thoughts on, on this whole Duck Dynasty controversy about the statements that were made, the suspension. What do you make of it? Um, I am uh, very, very disappointed at statements like this in general because they really are uninformed. Uh, here you have some uh, people that are lay people that really don't do a lot of research in terms of how to understand the scriptures right and how to interpret them, making uh, statements that are so, so harmful and so hurtful you know, to the LGBT community. Um, and, and it's just outrageous. It's interesting to me, though. I mean, there are plenty of passages that one can point to uh, in the Bible which, uh, which support the, the, those who say, look, the, you know, the Bible does not approve of homosexuality. And in fact, uh, you know, it's no, described as being an abomination in, in, in one text. There are plenty of passages which, you know, also say that a child who curses their parents should be put to death or prohibit eating shellfish or wearing different kinds of fabric. There's a verse that says adulterers should be put to death. Why do you think those passages are kind of glossed over? It's, it's often the passages on homosexuality or uh, on same-sex, um, on, on, on homosexuality that are focused on. In my book, this is an agenda people have because they certainly don't believe any longer that the earth is flat, which is also biblical in the Old Testament. Uh, but they pick and choose, you know, what they feel is still uh, relevant out of those passages, and it really shows their agenda. And let me just add to that, that um, in my studies, what I've discovered is that really none of the passages that talk about homosexuality or that touch on homosexuality really are about committed, loving homosexual relationships. They're always cast in an inappropriate uh, behavior, uh, you know, for instance, uh, the passage that gets quoted a lot from Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, here you clearly have a situation where we're dealing with rape and not a committed, loving, homosexual relationship. It's interesting to me how in 100 years ago there were those who used the Bible to support their belief in slavery and, and could point to Bible passages as being supportive of the notion of slavery. D do you sort of see, see this in the same light, that, that one's interpretation of the Bible should change over time, or is the written word the written word? Well, I believe that um, everything evolves. Today, we know that homosexuality is not a choice, and, and so today we have different knowledge, and, and sometimes I think people don't realize that the Bible itself contains a development of progressive revelation. I think that's, that's a term that many theologians like here. Progressive revelation, that means we get a more clear picture about the truth of what, is, you know, what God is trying to express uh, in the Bible, in, in the Holy Scriptures. And uh, of course, the, you know, the ultimate revelation of, of uh, God's truth was uh, embodied in Jesus Christ, uh, we as Christians believe. And, uh, and it's very significant to me that uh, Jesus Christ never once mentioned homosexuality. As for your specific situation, you've now been defrocked for performing your own son's marriage to a man. Uh, you were asked to voluntarily relinquish your religious credentials. You said no. Now the United Methodist Church has thrown you out. When you performed your son's wedding, did you, did you think that the road would, would, end, would end up here, with you being no longer a pastor in the Methodist Church? I, I certainly did not. I, I did it out of love for my son. It was an act of love, and especially in his case, where he had in the past struggled with his sexual orientation to a point where he was considering suicide. I, I thought for sure that the church would recognize that this was an act of love and, and that I would uh, receive leniency. Uh, besides, I actually um, uh, reported my intention to perform this wedding uh, to my bishop and my dis district superintendent. And, and also afterwards, after I did it, I let them know that I, in writing again that I actually performed this wedding. I never heard a peep from them until a complaint was filed uh, earlier this year. So for you, what happens now? Will you continue to speak out? Will you continue to minister? 
Uh, oh, absolutely. I, I tell you what, Anderson, I'm, I'm so blessed in, in some ways to be able to continue to, to share my story and to share my message uh, of inclusiveness and of love uh, because I've been invited to uh, so many different venues and uh, invited by so many different churches to speak. And uh, I'm just honored that, uh, that now I actually have a, a much larger parish than my little country parish that I uh, was preaching at before.